Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the Dragons and the West Tigers. So these are two teams that are going to be towards the middle to back end on the ladder. And this will play a part in how their team's made up and also how their team's going to score. So when you're looking at fullback to halfback there, their work's going to be a little bit different to a team that's going to be, you know, someone like the Panthers or the Storm where they're going to need a lot more attacking stats. So you'd be thinking with these guys, they're going to be pushing out of trouble a little bit. So you're looking at wingers... Um, and a fullback that that is really good at doing those um, those out of out of trouble meters, um, and that we're going to look at both the dragons and the tigers for that. And you can see that this is a team that's not going to get a lot of attack, um, just based on the fact that you know they've lost McInnes. They they should be a struggling team this year. But we'll go through Matt Dufty to start us off. Price of five seventy five, so already already a forty three average there. And you can see he's a very up and down player. He has. He has times where he can he can build up um, in in price a lot. He got he got into the six twenty six k mark, and then had a bunch of lean weeks there. So Dufty's someone that has a little bit of upside in terms of he can get those fifty to seventy scores. But then he has a bunch of low ones, which is fairly normal for this type of of fullback who can miss a few tackles and and if if the team's not doing too well, he he won't be scoring tries and not doing as well. But he obviously did well. In the, in the try scoring category, even in a team that wasn't that well. But he's, he's someone that I, I wouldn't be starting with. I think for a fullback, the, that's going to be an absolute gun. They're going to be obviously making you know over 200 metres and doing really well like an RTS or in a team that's going to be doing really well. So he's going to be a no for, for me. Ravalawa has never been fantasy relevant. Jack Burr is an interesting one. There was talks of him possibly playing in the back row, but it looks like he's wanting to get that centre spot. My issue is how, how many minutes he's gonna, is he going to get? He's currently in my team, but... Will he be able to get through the 80 minutes? He hasn't played much footy at all in the last two years, so that's my only worry. But if he does get that spot and he's, and he's feeling confident in his body, I think he, he needs to be in, in the majority of teams. Lomax is our gun centre there, and, and we'll all want him at some point in the year, I'd imagine. Um, Pereira is, is the thought of being on that wing. You've also got someone like Ramsey, who might be a, who might be a chance of coming in there. Um, also in that centre spot, Max Fagai was was a chance of being there. He'll probably play at some point in the year, especially when when injuries come up. So someone ha someone to have a think about. But Corey Norman's never really been relevant. Ben Hunt is an interesting one. He he does have an, an okay average when he plays in in the halves, but his better scores come when he when he moves to hooker. And there's a chance that he plays a little bit of hooker this year. Um, even with McInnes, well, sorry, with McInnes going down, there's a chance he does. And you can see that he's 80 minutes there. He can he can average at seventy points or just above there, um, which is amazing. But when he when he plays half, he, he's he's someone that averages around fifty five, which is what his finish is. But being hooker and half dual position is really is really cool. But let's just see if he can actually do really well in the half position and maintain that position all year. And if he does, then then he's going to be a solid scorer for whoever decides to pick him up. <coughs> uh, Joshy Kerr, we spoke about him before. He's going to get he's going to get all right minutes. Um, but at 481k, there's not much upside there. He's not going to be a gun at the end of the year. Price at 36. Yeah. Even if he's, he's going to start more games this year, obviously, than, than on the interchange, but when he starts, he doesn't play too many more minutes. He's around that 40 minutes anyway, so uh, nothing too exciting here. McCulloch's the interesting one. We've already spoken about him before, but with Andrew, he's going to get the starting spot. He should be looking at close to 80 minutes. And... Price of 54 with a couple of games off the interchange at the start and then an injured game at the end of the year. You can see the scores here, 68, 83, 74, 52 or 45, 68 and 69. And that's with two tries in there and a couple of try saves. So, you know, nothing crazy. You can see the, the tackles that he's getting when he when he plays that position. He's pretty much over 50 every game, which is, which is awesome. And I think he'll do the same thing um, this year, which could put him a little bit under price. And if you're looking for someone that's a, Slightly undervalued in the hooker position, and you're not wanting to start with a cook or a grant, then I think McCulloch's a great option there. Paul Vaughan was fantasy relevant in the past, and uh, we won't be talking about him here. Let's talk about Ford again. A lot of people still ask me about Jackson Ford, but you can see his scores. When he when he was playing big minutes, it was through the middle, so we're not exactly sure how he's how his scores going to go on an edge, which is the which is most likely where he's going to be playing. And how many minutes he get? Even if he gets 60 minutes on the edge, he's not going to be scoring what he would do in the middle. And he's someone that does miss a bunch of tackles. So if he's already missing that many tackles through the middle of the park, 
on the on an edge with some more skillful players. You can see, you know, some, some palms off him and 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 missing a bunch there. Um, so I'd be really worried about his uh, his scoring potential, given the fact that he's already priced at thirty three. I see him averaging somewhere in the thirties, and I don't see the upside even with the the dual position there. Blake Laurie, not someone we want to be talking about. He he helped us out in the past, but you know we can look at him again. But I don't see too much upside at six hundred and three. He's not going to be a an out and out gun for you, especially when he's when he's played some decent minutes, especially in the back end of the year. Yeah, you, know, you got 67 in one game, 36 in the next, which you're, you're averaging, you know, just under 50 there. Um, yeah, and a couple of he's just he's just a bit up and down, and and not something that is going to be too crazy. You see a 52 and a 42 in, in good minutes. He's not going to play any more minutes than that. Already priced at 45, he's not a keeper for me. Um, some interesting ones on the bench. We got Farmer Suli, who has moved over here, and and there's no he was already playing. At the uh, at the Roosters, but you, know, you can see you get a bunch of games, but limited minutes. And I assume he's moved over so he can get a bunch more minutes. And you can see when he does get some decent minutes, he, his PPM goes really well. You can look up there at 0.83. So if he's if he's looking to get around 40 minutes, and you, you'll see him be about 10 points undervalued, uh, with a with a chance of uh, you know a few extra attacking stats in a few extra minutes when you know we can, you can see his his options. He's 30 34 or 43 in these type of bigger minute games. Um, which is really interesting, but as I say, it's more hit between him and Alvaro. If they get the spot, you got Alvaro on the bench there. Uh, sorry, on the on the on the others list. Uh, Marin's not going to do too much. Umayano is going to be moving around based on like more of the utility value. Um, Kadel, so we we don't have much interest in him. Um, but that's the Dragons guys. Let me know what you think on on those guys, and we'll move over to the Tigers from there. So it's now predicted that Dan Laurie is going to get the one position. And where is Mr. Moses? You know, where, where are they going to fit? Is he going to be there longer term? It doesn't look like it because Dewey's going to be playing there. So who's going to play the one? If, if Laurie starts at one, you've got to pick him up. Nofaluma, I think, is overpriced at the moment. Had a really, really good year last year. Uh, scored a lot of tries and, and he doesn't have the upside that a few of the other wing fullbacks do, in, like in the Pappenhausens, um, AJ, AJ Brimson, for example, Tommy Trob, those kind of guys. He doesn't have the upside and he's a winger, so... All his um, all his hard work is coming out of trouble and scoring those tries where where the fullbacks can put on a few tries as well. Um, Roberts, we've a few people again are, are talking about Roberts and and our biggest issue for him being a three thirty six, he's, he's priced really low, but yeah, at twenty five with an average of twenty eight point five, um, having a negative two um, in 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 that in those scores, I should say. Um, but you can see when when he's on there, he gets a bunch of tackle breaks. Averages about 100 meters a game and makes some tackles. So, if we can stay on the park, which he's on and off, that's kind of my worry. He's, he's currently in my team as well with Bird and, and hoping that their roles can be cemented uh, across the across the season. But you know, he's someone that has has the upside if if he uh, if he does well. All right. So yeah, Mbai, we're going to leave out of this chat. Tommy Talau, Leilua, nothing much to talk about there. Luke Brooks. He can't have a, a bad a year as last year, can he? And with Benji running running around the park last year, Brooks has to do more of the kicking. Dewey is not much of a kicker, same with Mbai, um, in, in general play, so you expect him to be running the team, and, and hopefully this is finally the year that he breaks out. James Talmau playing around 40 minutes, nothing too much to talk about. Jacob Little looks like he'll be, you know, if we're, if we're looking at close to a 60 minute, 60 minutes per game, we're looking at close to 50 points. Um, based on his his current PPM and, and output, so he has to be in your team if he's starting. Off hand, Gowie, I'm getting a bunch of bunch more questions about him, so we'll keep talking about him. Sorry for those that have have followed for a long time. Also, guys, um, please keep hitting like and subscribe um, if you if you're enjoying these. I, I really appreciate it. We're growing a nice community, and um, just jump into that Discord group. Um, I've got the link in the in the description there. It's getting up close to 300 members now, and and we'll be creating a people's team as well. So for those that are in the Discord, we'll be I'll be creating a team that will be voted on for, from the guys in the Discord chat, and, and we'll see how that team goes across the season. So if you want to join in, uh, join in with that, that fun, then jump into the Discord chat, guys. Joe Fangiawi, 31. Played a lot of um, played a lot of time uh, on the edge as well at, at times in, in previous years, and a little bit at lock, but... Uh, it's going to be used as a as a prop in this team, 
And you can see his minutes are kind of everywhere. There you go, second row for 80 minutes for 35. But if we look at his time at in the middle, 57 and 58 minutes is, is really cool, but 34 and 58, nothing special there. When he's, when he's priced at, at 31, he's not going to get those type of minutes playing here. If he was to get over 50 minutes, then great, but I'm expecting more time like 41, um, 48, 49, and getting scores between the, the 30 to 40 mark, which again, I don't think puts him at uh, much of a discount to where he's going to be. At a decent PPM, if he can get those minutes up, then, then awesome, but I don't see that in this team. When you look at it and go... Okay, who are the guys on the bench? You've got Michele, you've got Stefano, who's going who's gonna to take a bunch of minutes. Obviously, he's gonna, they're going to share that with Tamao. You've got Alex Twal, who I'm hoping will play big minutes because he, he deserves to. Leilua's going to play 80. And then we just have Sean Bloor. So it looks like um, looks like Ghana should get that position and they should have another forward on the bench. But it just depends what they do with the hooker. If they've got an extra hooker on the, on the bench, which they should for Jacob Little, then you might see an increase in minutes for and Gao, which would make him worth it. So, you, know, you can't expect Stefano, to, like as a young fella, to be playing too many more minutes than 30 to 40 uh, at this stage, but we'll have a little, little further look into that. Leilu, a few people have been talking about him, but he did really well last year, and I, I don't see him in the upper echelon of players, so I wouldn't be deciding to bring him in at this stage. Sean Bloor did his has broken his wrist, so it looks like he'll be out for one to two weeks. Has a lot of talent, so he's someone that I think, if he's out for a couple of weeks, you, you're going to make trades over the first few weeks, and you can, if he's coming straight back into the starting side, then you can bring him straight in for, for one of those trades and free up some cash to upgrade one of your other mid raiders that hasn't done as well. Or you can, if he comes onto the bench, you can wait and see for a week or two. He doesn't, he's not going to make too much cash in those weeks, and then bring him in. So. A lot of people are already stressing about, oh, the seasons, then all fantasy seasons already shit. Like when, can, when's it over? I'm like, well, everyone's in the same boat, so try not to worry about it. Let's talk about Stefano to finish, guys. All right, so 246. A lot of people are, are really interested and and only got the uh, the couple of games, but his PPM was great. He worked worked hard in that time for no misses. Uh, 17 tackles in total across the two games for no misses with with 37 and a 54. Uh, 54 meters, meter efforts during that time. So for a PPM of 1.16, which is, which is awesome. So again, if if we're looking at close to 30 minutes, you maybe drop the PPM down to a one just to be conservative, and you're looking at a uh, at scores of 30, um, which I think is really conservative for someone like Stefano, who has, who has some big wraps on him, and he's going to make over 150k if he can get to be priced at 30. So I think if if he's going to get onto that bench. Especially with Sean Bloor out, I think he's going to be a good option across the year. He should get a few more games than three, which you'd hope. But if he can get close to sort of five, six games for you and average close to 30 or even above, if he, if he manages to score a try off the bench, then he's going to be a really good option for teams. So he's someone that I'd probably stick on your bench at this stage, looking to be between that 18 to 21 in your squad. Um, as we said, we've got Dewey coming back. Zane, Mug Zane Musgrove is in there and... And also Russell Packer. So these are the kind of guys you've got to be thinking about uh, with Joff Joe Fan Gowie as well. And and they might just be based on, on injuries. So if they have a couple of injuries, then Offan Gowie should uh, be playing bigger minutes than what he might do at the start. So we'll, we'll see what happens with these guys on the bench and how that's made up. There's someone like um, Jake Stimkin who who could play a, who could come into that team and, and take a few minutes off Little, which will be great for guys like Twal, um, Offan Gowie. Uh, guys like Garner should be getting close to 80 minutes um, with Leilua there. So, yeah, really interesting squad when you've got Billy Walters coming back in round six as well. So you'd hope for, for Jacob Little to make a lot of cash before maybe you know, Walters coming in um, and trying to take a half spot, half spot or a hooker spot. But there you go, guys. Um, let me know what you think about that analysis. Um, we'll know more come these trials. So the, the trial team is going to be named in the next couple of days and those trials will be closer to full squad um, for this week and then the following week we'll have the uh, we'll have the, the, the matches finally. So we're 17 days away. I'm getting excited. Um, but yeah, those trial teams, most of them are, are very much similar to what the, the main teams are going to be for, uh, are going to be in round one. So looking forward to that, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I said, let me know what you're, what you're doing with your team and, and ask some questions. I'm doing a Q&A video this week, so please get your questions in and I'll, uh, we'll go through that very soon. So have a good one, guys. Bye.